Hey folks, it's Maxi here and welcome to another TW 2020 video. He joins today for our November event, hopefully one step closer to getting to the next level and taking the WWF to, yeah, where it eventually went to. We're missing a few people for this one, not as many as previous, so the only people missing for this one is Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant, both are working, I believe, with New Japan. Yes, New Japan, I remember, and Tommy Rich is still injured. Which is fair enough, apart from that. It's a full quota of wrestler. Again, we're going to be basically working within the Baltimore Stadium. Just under 45,000, I imagine we should get. We do have our figurehead in action. It's a decent show. Uh, I've also imported the angles that I used in TW 2016. So hopefully that should help with the likes of getting over talents that have got, are with a manager. As you'll see as the show goes on. So not too much has really changed. Just been kind of... Obviously, Backlund's going to get his rematch here against Mr. Perfect. It's just really getting people over and praying that we finally get a position that we can start offering written contracts, especially when you see the industry and the economy is both rising. So hopefully, we should be in a very good, thriving position shortly. So let's crack on with today's show, 11 segments. Let's see how we do. So 45,235 at the Baltimore Stadium. And we started off with a bout that had great heat and decent wrestling and had King Kong Bundy defeat Tito Santana in 936 with a big splash. A 57 segment here, again just giving a bit more heat towards Bundy in case that match pops up again between him and Jimmy Snooker. Good work at ringside from Heenan and good to know these two mesh well, which again will help enhance the performance of King Kong Bundy. I then had... Basically, Lord Alfred Hayes interviewing Bobby Heenan and they were talking about the monster that was Bundy, what he's done and what he's going to look to do in the future. So we're bringing in these angles, it means when I do my WWE save over on Twitch uh, I'll be able to use the likes of Renee Young, um, Kayla Braxton and Charlie Caruso just to name a few. So a 42 there for hyping up Bundy. Bundy came across well but Bobby Heenan didn't improvise very well because he was unscripted and he'd have been unhappy. If he was scripted. Next up, about the good heat and subpar wrestling, Eddie Gilbert, fresh from his split from Bobby Eaton, defeats Don Morocco in 10.04 with a hot shot. Uh, a 53 rated segment here, disappointingly, these guys didn't click, so that's probably took it down from about a 60. But a good win for Eddie Gilbert at a big event and a big stage, so hopefully he'll gain some overness within at least the tri state area. Next up, a promo from Gino Hernandez. The man is a god in the making this, and he gets 71. Not his best promo, it did get the crowd hotter. Uh, he did get one that hurt the 80s, which was pretty successful. But this one just in the 70s, as he gets ready for his title defence. And he took on Pedro Morales again, just because Pedro is no way out, he wants to leave. So I felt like, let's get one more win for Gino. And it was good heat in the match, decent wrestling. Gino Hernandez defeats Pedro Morales in 14-13 with Gino making the 10th defence of the IC title, so hopefully a long title defence here. He's defending it quite often on television as well, but a 72 rating for Gino and a 49 there for Pedro, and it got the crowd hotter as well. Then another promo, basically Kolov and Putski just basically by writing the fact that Hogan and Andre didn't make it tonight, they're obviously running scared, so that extended their feud, although it did lose it a lot of heat with a 47 rated promo and this led to a match between them and the Road Warriors and this one excelled it was about the great heat and decent wrestling and the Road Warriors defeated the Eastern Bloc in 11.56 when Animal defeated Ivan Putski with a top rope power slam the Road Warriors make the 6th defence of the WWF tag titles you can see there in terms of performance they're just a good bit ahead of Putski and Kolov and it extends the storyline that Putski and Stokes uh, Koloff were in. What I like about it, the 75 rating is good and it shows that we've got at least something in the tag division. What's going to be interesting is this is going to change my normal booking pattern because normally I'm very bad for this because WWE is drilled into my head that tag teams need to be split and this is one tag team that I kind of will need to keep forever uh, for as long as the save goes so I'm going to hope I can do that and yeah. That's going to have to do a big change in my yeah, booking philosophy because I've been getting it so much because WWE's drilled in my head that tag teams need to split up. 
Next up, a promo from the American Dream Dusty Rhodes. It's a 63. This is kind of like a filler match, but it was getting everybody on the card just to make sure nobody was unhappy. And it was about they had fantastic heat and good wrestling. And it was a, a shock victory for the team of David Schultz, Jake Roberts and Larry Zabisco as they defeated the American Dream Dusty Rhodes, Superfly Jimmy Snooker and Jim Duggan in 12.06 when Larry Zabisco defeated Jim Duggan with a form object. So a 77 here. My reason for having the heels go over was simple. Um, you'll find out shortly. <laughs> I just realised that's going to completely spoil the main event, but obviously get an idea of who's going to win the main event. And it's to give me some more heels for that event. So well done, I've just completely spoiled the win the main event. So yeah, 65 promo, Backlund's not great in the mic. I probably should have made it as Kurt Henning, but I didn't want to make it too in favour of Henning. And their matchup had fantastic heat and great wrestling. Kurt Henning defeats Bob Backlund in 2039 with Henning Plex. So his first title defence, you can't even take a title off him straight away. Not a baby face, but Henning prevails. 81 and an 81 73 ratings there. I did try and get Kurt signed up to a written deal exclusive, but he's got a loyalty to AWA. There will be a point where I'll edit that out because obviously he did sign permanently for WWF in real life, so I'll edit it at one point, but not. Anytime soon, till I know I'm off on a lot of people written exclusive contracts, then I'll, I'll do it because that'll make it a wee bit more fairer. But yeah, the plan is the likes of David Schultz, Slide Zabisco, uh, Jake Roberts, these guys can all push now and try and challenge for that WWF title. And of course, now Hogan is fully fit, uh, he'll be going up against them to eventually propel himself into the title picture, hopefully in time for WrestleMania 1. So that's going to give me another year and five months, four months to get Hogan. To where I'm to be. We increased our pop in two regions, so that would have been in the southeast and in Puerto Rico. A 77 now is what we need to obtain to basically keep pop in our home area. So overall, a pretty successful show. I'll just jump in to the main menu here, we'll look at size and just generally what we need to do going forward. But uh, ideally, even though it's a basic conversion, I do want to try and take this all the way through to years, years in the future, but we'll see if the fact that it was converted in day one may hinder against it. So 0.20 for the show, as I say we're only limited in a few places that we broadcast that, as you can tell there is All Star Wrestling. Ah, so do they get shown in the same day? That might hamper the ratings, but anyway, 0.45, that might be... One of our best ever televised shows. Let's go have a look then. So, you can see we're getting a bit better with the television show. Tendencies have obviously dipped a bit because we have lost a bit of pop in the tri state region where we base every show. So, we're slowly gaining it back, but obviously, that's can obviously took a big decline from what it was in February. And yeah, 0 0.45, yes, our biggest so far. November, so the ratings are up, especially with that, that's good to see. So size, as I say, we need to get 77 in the Great Lakes, the Mid-Atlantic, New England, Southeast and Tri-State. Southeast up to 41, so that's making good progression. Uh, New England and the Southeast, sorry, New England and the Great Lakes are, New England's at 65, so it's progressed well, Mid-Atlantic and Great Lakes is at 57, so you can see there, if we can keep going at the way we're going, it'll be interesting when we get the likes of New England, Mid-Atlantic, Great Lakes, all up to the 70s as well. So then when we're, the pressure will be on to ensure that the South East is getting over. But also ensure then that we're not losing anything in the Tri-State. And then we're going to have to put in really big shows to try and get the Tri-State and these regions over. And make sure that we are getting up to big and then we're big. Hopefully better financial security. And then from there on we can seek to, yeah full-time written contracts. We can see there, he's unhappy, he's leaving. A few people have got morale issues, that's just as I say because of the 0% backstage that these mods are just because it's a poor conversion by myself. I've got, so uh, maybe one thing where I'll just look at maybe editing a few things just to make sure it runs a bit more smoothly and a bit more realistic. So at the moment we're 6.9 million in the bank, that is a good gain there but please bear in mind there's still a lot of miscellaneous and tax and other things to take out, so I expect a lot of things to drop. Although, look at the big difference in merchandise. 
from 207,000 up to a million. Now I think that is because our merchandise did gain up a level, yep, because that's our start of the next level, so the fact we've made so much on merch is probably going to help us as well going forward, so maybe those written contracts will come a lot quicker than I thought of, but as I say, the difference there is absolutely staggering, if I click that back up again, like four times what we normally would make on merchandise, so uh, that's going to help. Just still interesting to see how much we lose in terms of merch. So that's it, the next episode will obviously be the end of show for December, that'll kind of be like a two part episode where I'll do that and then in the same video we'll look ahead at the of course rest of the year for 1983, company of the year etc and see if we did improve anything. So thanks very much for watching, it's much appreciated, as always check out the links below in the description for other people's content, as I say good places for mods etc and of course any comments, likes, subscriptions, all that jazz, just try and get social, as I say I'm still more than happy to just keep talking to people and honestly because we need to remember it's a small community, let's try and get this game out to people because we all want a book better than WWE does in real life and this is our way of doing so. So thanks for watching, take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.